This month on Images, we honor the life's work of George Matched. Promising students and proud donors meet at the scholarship reception, and we look back at the outstanding year that was 2011. Happy New Year from Images. Welcome to the first edition of 2012. I'm Rio Almaria, admissions representative at College of DuPage. There's always a lot happening at COD. If you've been staying up to date with Images, you know that. Before ushering in a new year of interesting activities, programs, and progress, let's glance back and recap some highlights from 2011. Sure to stay tuned to Images for all of the exciting happenings that 2012 is sure to bring. And remember, you can watch past episodes of Images anytime on demand by visiting the COD website, cod.edu. Students choose College of DuPage for a high quality education and an exceptional value with state of the art facilities, award winning faculty, and a focus on student success. Experience the value of a lifetime at College of DuPage. Is it better to give or receive when it comes to scholarships for students who might not be able to pursue their dreams without financial assistance? The answer is both. College of DuPage's scholarship reception is an opportunity for scholarship recipients to meet donors and an opportunity for donors to see the faces of those students whose lives have been changed because of their contributions. I'm just here and I really want to thank you because I absolutely do not know where I would be um, if I didn't have this help. You know, this is a great school, it's a great opportunity. Apply and see what happens. 
And I remember when I got the scholarship, I called her and we were both just screaming <laughs> on the phone. It was like winning the lottery. Donors, I just want to say that you are the perfect example of what we want people to be in this country, you know, to, to help others, to give of yourself, sacrifice. And without support, without encouragement from family and friends and money from donors, this wouldn't be possible tonight. You know, it's easy for a lot of us just to write a check to a charity, but it makes all the difference in the world when you actually get to meet the person who is benefiting from your scholarship. Probably in the toughest day of my life, when I was about to pretty much forget about school and keep working, I received two letters from the COD Foundation, which granted me the honor of being, you know, the recipient of two scholarships. And it was one of the happiest days of my life because I, uh, if, if it wasn't for that, I probably wouldn't be here today. Our scholarship reception is an event we hold every October, and we do it to bring together the students who won our scholarships as well as the donors who made the scholarships possible. It's great donor stewardship, but it also helps the student to understand the donor's intentions and why someone would want to give a scholarship to someone they've never met. I've received the adult returning scholarship and it means the world to me. I would not have been able to come to COD this year without it. This is awesome and you know it's because of people like you that there is a light at the end of the tunnel for us. Then there also is the financial aspect of it. I've been unemployed for almost four years so finances, school costs are a big chunk of my expenses right now. So having the scholarship provided to me by the foundation was a, a real big boost for me. These scholarships are extremely important. The College of, du of DuPage is just an absolute jewel in DuPage County and you can look around and see we've got three new buildings. We have really just amazing programs, top of the line faculty, and we have students in DuPage County who cannot access this. Um, the scholarships enable students to be able to go to school, to be able to buy their books. We're in fact launching a new scholarship that will also include childcare. So the scholarships are very important because they help to remove an obstacle for a student and help them complete their education. And we know that's important for DuPage County because two out of three students who graduate from the College of DuPage stay and live and work in DuPage County. So these are the people who draw your blood, they fix your car, they might be the person who you know, drafts the designs for your house. Um, so these are people's friends and neighbors. For all of you donors who are sitting here and you're not speaking, I just want to say thank you so much. Thank you truly so much. What a privilege. I, I know that I'm getting the best education. I couldn't, couldn't want to be anywhere better than the College of DuPage, and I'm really thankful. So thank you, truly thank you. We want students to be aware of the fact that they can apply for scholarships. If they go on the College of DuPage website, there is a link through financial aid, and they can also link to scholarships through the College of DuPage Foundation. We have accounting scholarships and engineering scholarships. Not all of the scholarships are need-based, and not all of the scholarships require you to have a 4.0 or even a 3.0. So if, if an individual student feels like they want to give it a shot, we would encourage them to apply for a College of DuPage scholarship. College of DuPage's Culinary and Hospitality Center houses state-of-the-art instructional facilities for COD's culinary students. Now, one of the skills kitchens is dedicated to George Matched, culinary professor and program coordinator for more than 30 years. His life's work made College of DuPage one of the premier culinary educational institutions in Illinois. Tonight we honor a special man whose life's work has been spent giving a hand up. 
And the analogy to feeding our community is not only literal, it is figurative. Most of us never get to live long enough uh, for us to be able to be recognized for our life's work. And befitting that your name should be on that facility for all that you've done for this institution, for all that you've done for this program, we're honored to be able to apply your name and to give you recognition for a life's achievement that while well, all of us would like to at some point in time be able to accomplish what you've done. So this, I toast you and Vivian for your life's work and for your contribution to the College of DuPage. Know that we love you and we wish you well and we're honored to have your name on this facility, George. Here, here. Tonight's event was the Skills Kitchen Dedication uh, in honor of George Match. Um, this was an idea that uh, we proposed uh, about a year and a half ago or so. Uh, when we started building the building because we thought that it would be a fitting tribute to George because he has donated so much time, he has donated so much effort. The man has worked tirelessly for over three decades for the College of DuPage and the uh, District 502 residents. My heart just felt so good uh, basically tonight to, 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 with the response and the growth of this program. And the growth of this program is basically duly solely to this man, George Match. When I heard that they were going to name the kitchen after him, I was so excited. I thought there's no more deserving person because as everybody has said, he lived here for 30 years. He was here day and night overseeing, checking on, um, mentoring students, mentoring all our part-time faculty. He was here all the time. It was his program. This is just an amazing facility. And to me, it is the kind of facility that speaks to the kind of person that George Match is and the kind of program he, that he built. Uh, you can have wonderful staff and wonderful students, but you gotta have a facility to work in. And you can do amazing things with very little, but you can do so much more if you got the kind of facility that that is there to serve them. I've had the pleasure of being involved with College DuPage from the very beginning. And when I started in the 70s, um, what I moved into was a uh, converted biology laboratory that still had the slate tables and one four burner domestic stove. And so that's how the program started. They refer to me as Pac-Man in that anytime there was a space that was underutilized uh, anywhere on, on the main campus, I would figure out some use for it. So we built a bakery in one space that was a utility closet in a um, culinary market in a room that was a sandwich shop and um, converted part of the warehouse uh, and so we were just kind of putting pieces together for, for many, many years um, until um, we finally uh, were invited to get involved in the development of this building. So, I've, as I say, I've seen it from the very beginning and now it's become this landmark facility that's second to none anywhere in the United States. Having this facility named after me, I think, is uh, it's a wonderful honor uh, to have something named after you it, while you're still alive. Uh, but um, also is it's going to provide a phenomenal facility for those students that are presently here at the college and also for future students to work on state-of-the-art equipment, um, to be able to be in a phenomenal instructional facility. And I think that's a big part. Uh, stoves and broilers are one thing, but to design a facility so that it, it, it's really a truly uh, excellent teaching facility uh, is what's really important because it's all about the students. That's, that's why we're here. Start your hospitality career at College of DuPage. For more information about degrees and certificates offered in COD's Culinary and Hospitality Management Program, visit their pages on the web at cod.edu. For an elegant twist preparing and presenting a favorite fish, stay tuned. COD's chef Chris Thielman shares his recipe for salmon flour served with vegetables and a Vierge sauce. 
Students choose College of DuPage for a high-quality education and an exceptional value with state-of-the-art facilities, award-winning faculty, and a focus on student success. Experience the value of a lifetime at College of DuPage. Hi everybody, welcome to another episode of In the Kitchen with Chris. Today we're going to be making some salmon. Salmon is one of those fish that I think a lot of people have, a lot of people like, but it's like, you know, what can I do that's interesting, fun, and exciting with my salmon? I'm going to show you a salmon flour with some sautéed vegetables and a vierge sauce. And this recipe is compliments of a friend of mine in France. His name is Jean-Marc Villard. He showed me and the students that uh, we take to France every year. He showed us how to make this about five, six years ago. And it's a recipe I use occasionally. And so thank you, Chef Jean-Marc. Let's get rolling. So what we're going to do is two things at once. So the first thing is we're going to add a little butter to our pan. And we are going to sweat our vegetables. Now, it's not a lot of butter. It's just a little bit, about a tablespoon or so. But we're going to add to that the carrots, and we're going to add to that the celery or celery root, also known as celeriac. Celeriac. If you just have regular celery, that's just fine also. But as you've noticed, we have cut these into a julienne. A julienne is approximately one eighth by one eighth by two, two and a half inches or so. And so they're very, very thin. And what's going to happen is these are going to cook in about eh, 10 minutes or so. They cook fairly quick. So we're going to add the leeks also, and we're going to add just a little bit of salt and pepper, not a lot. Always remember to add a little bit of salt and pepper whenever you're cooking, okay? Because uh, if you don't, flavors have a tendency to uh, taste flat. All right, now, as this is sauteing slowly, and then in about a minute or two, Manny is going to take a cover, a little aluminum foil cover, and then cover it up. If you don't have a, a hard cover, that's fine. Piece of foil, a pan, darn near anything will work. As long as you cover it up and cook it low and slow, you do not want to color this, okay? You want it sweated, sweat the veggies. All right, so here we go. We're going to uh, take a uh, salmon, and we are going to make our salmon flour, our salmon flour, all right? Now, the salmon flour is an interesting technique because what we have to do is we have to take thin slices of salmon and we're going to put them in the ring. And as you can see, I've already placed one here in the ring and so I'm going to move this and then place it on the side and I'm going to make another one. All we've done here is we've taken very thin slices of salmon, skin side down, okay, because the skin side is going to be darker in color and you want that darker in color to be on the bottom of this. And so we're going to take a, a slicing knife. So Manny, if you'd hand me a slicer over there. And then we are going to make very thin slices. Thank you. And I'll show you the technique. So this is approximately two and a half, three inches across, about three inches across. So we're going to need approximately seven to eight very, very thin slices for one serving of salmon flour. This is a side of salmon. So if I had to guesstimate, I would say an entire, an entire side of salmon will probably serve about six to eight people. So depending on how many people you're serving. This recipe right here, so he's going to turn this off right now. Let me interrupt because the, uh, the vegetables wait for no one. So he's going to turn this on very, very, very low. He's going to cover it up and he's going to let it sit for about two or three or four minutes or so. Because you've got to make sure that that celery and the carrots are cooked all the way through. All right, so we're going to take extremely thin slices of salmon and we're going to lay them right next to us. Now, I have a very long slicing knife here because when you're making thin slices of items, the long slicing knife actually helps make your job a lot easier. You can use a chef's knife or a French knife, that'll work just fine, but this style of knife makes slicing things extremely simple and easy. If you have it razor sharp, it also works very, very well. So let's say that uh, you want to uh, slice your turkey at Thanksgiving. A knife like this works really well and it makes it so much easier. All right, we have enough slices. So now we're going to take our filet, put it on the side. All right, so what we do is we have a lightly greased piece of parchment paper. 
You can buy parchment paper now in any store. Usually it's brown when you see it at your local store. In the industry, ours are always white. Same stuff, it's called parchment paper. I gave it a little spray, or you could use a little butter, or you could use a little olive oil. It doesn't matter as long as you grease it just a little bit so the salmon won't stick to the paper. All right, so now we're gonna take our salmon. Remember, skin side down, okay? Skin side down. So we're going to lay a piece on the outside, and then we're going to lay another piece opposite that, and then we're going to start laying the salmon on the inside with a slightly descending angle. Let me explain what that means. On the outside, we're gonna have the salmon straight up. And then as we go in, we're gonna have it bend in a little more, and then the middle piece of the flower will be at a, even more of an extreme angle. This way, it'll look more like a flower when it's done cooking, okay? All right, so that's three pieces, four pieces. And again, one more, and I think all we're gonna get in is one more. If you need to cut it, go ahead and cut it to make it fit perfectly, really doesn't matter. Okay, now, these are ready to go. Okay, so as you, then we take our little mold, okay, and you can buy these anywhere. Uh, this one happens to be made out of silicone, but you can uh, buy them uh, stainless steel, tin, they're available almost anywhere. Anywhere that sells kitchen supplies will sell these kind of cookie cutters. These are actually cookie cutters. All right, so as you can see, we have two of them on a pan. We're gonna take a little bit of olive oil and we're gonna drizzle just a few drops on top of each one. We're then gonna take a little bit of white wine, put our thumb over it, and we're gonna put just a few drops of white wine on the salmon. This will give it a little bit of flavor, just, just literally a few drops. And then we're gonna take again a little bit of salt, just a little bit, not a lot, and just a smidge of pepper, and again, not a lot. Remember, this is just to add layers of flavor. Chefs in the industry, we add layers of flavor. We try never to have one power, one flavor overpower another. We always try to just have layers of flavor. It makes for a much more interesting dish. Now, we're gonna bake this in a low oven, and a low oven is about 300, 325 degrees. This will take eight to 10 minutes. And as this is baking in the oven, we're then going to go ahead and finish our vegetables, and we're gonna make our Vierge sauce. Okay, it's time to make our Vierge sauce. Classically, Vierge sauce is olive oil, tomatoes, onions or shallots, and some lemon juice and spices. We're going to leave the tomato out of it because in this particular application for the salmon flour, I don't think it's necessary. So as you can see, Manny has removed the cover from our vegetables and now we're gonna add the zucchini. The reason that we're adding the zucchini at the end is because it does not take a lot of time to cook. The carrots, the celery, the celeriac, or, or you know, celery or celeriac, and also the leeks need a little time to make sure they cook all the way through because they're very, very fibrous vegetables. So we're gonna cook this again. This will be done in about three minutes. The salmon should be done in about five minutes. This can sit on the side without a problem. And now we're gonna make our Vierge sauce. Our Vierge sauce consists of shallots, olive oil, and I'm actually measuring I'm not guessing. And garlic, minced garlic, very finely minced garlic. And we have herbs and spices. So let me take a minute and tell you what we have. We've got dill, parsley, basil, and chervil. If you wanna use just parsley, work great. If you wanna use just basil, work great. I recommend a combination of nice gentle spices. For example, sage, way too powerful. Tarragon, a little bit too powerful. Chervil, nice and delicate flavor. Basil, nice delicate flavor. Parsley, fresh parsley again, nice delicate flavor. So I heavily recommend that you use herbs that are delicate in nature. Do not use strong tasting herbs because it's gonna overpower the dish. Now, we're gonna take our lemon and we're gonna cut this in half and we are going to squeeze in 
about a half a lemon juice. Okay. Now we're going to stir this around and we're going to let this macerate. I would recommend that you let this sit at least five or ten minutes, which is fine, okay, because you're making it fresh. Or if you wanted to make this the night before, it'll also work just great. So we're going to add just a little bit of salt. Again, not a lot, just a little bit. Again, layers of flavor. And our sauce here is basically ready to go, but I'm going to add just a little more olive oil. Needs just a little bit more. If you see, we have a handy little squeeze bottle for the olive oil. Works really good. So you can buy one at the store. All right, our Vierge sauce is ready to go. Our vegetables should be ready to go. And our salmon will be done in about five minutes. We'll be back. Due to the magic of television, our salmon is finished. So I've taken it out of the oven, I put a little piece of aluminum foil on it, so let it sit for about two, three minutes. Carryover cooking is going to finish cooking the salmon the rest of the way. Now, we're going to take our vegetables, which look perfect and beautiful by the way. We're going to take a pair of tongs, and we are going to put a small bundle of the assorted vegetables on the plate. All right. This is going to act as a bed underneath the salmon and give it some beautiful color, some beautiful texture, some beautiful flavor. Now we're going to take one of the salmon flowers and again we're going to pick it up off the paper, put it right on the vegetables and we're going to take our lovely Vierge sauce and I recommend that you dribble some around as well as maybe just a touch on top, not a real lot, just a little bit. Okay, but I especially like it going around. And then if you'd like, you can serve this with a small lemon wedge if you'd like. It's entirely up to you. All right, and then there we have it. This is your uh, salmon flour with uh, Vierge sauce and some beautiful sweated carrots, zucchini, celery, celeriac, and leeks. Hope you enjoy it. Thanks for coming today, everybody. And well, we're now gonna go enjoy our salmon. Have a great day. For more information about culinary arts courses, degrees, and certificates, as well as other hospitality administration program offerings, visit their pages on the web at cod.edu. That's all the time we have for this edition of Images. We hope you enjoyed this program from College of DuPage. Also, you can watch past episodes of Images on demand by visiting our website at cod.edu. We wish you all a prosperous new year and hope to see you often in 2012. I'm Rio Almaria, see you next time.